This lesson is on chords and arcs. The goal is to understand the relationship of congruent chords, arcs, and central angles in circles. And the standard is geometry circles number two. What you should understand by the end of the lesson is that you can use information about congruent parts of a circle or congruent circles to find information about other parts of the circle or circles. All right, what we're going to be looking at in this lesson is chord. Oh, remember, a chord is a line segment that goes from one side of the circle to the other, but not necessarily through the center of the circle like the diameter does. And an arc is part of the outside of the circle. Where do you think you are as far as your knowledge of chords and arcs in circles? A one, two, three, or four? If you would put that at the top of your notes right now. And we'll get on with the lesson. Alright, here is Theorem 12.6 and its converse. The theorem says within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent chords have congruent arcs. So if chord AB is congruent to chord CD, then arc AB is congruent to arc CD. The converse says within a circle or in congruent circles, if you have congruent arcs, then you have congruent chords. So if congru a chord A or sorry, if arc AB is congruent to arc CD, then chord AB is congruent to chord CD. Theorem 12.8 states that in a circle, if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects or cuts into two equal sections the chord and its arc. So I have this half of chord CE and the other half ED. They're congruent, which gives us this little arc CA is congruent to arc AD. And theorem 12.5 and its converse, the theorem states within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent chords. The converse is within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent chords have congruent central angles. So here are two congruent central angles. There are the chords. They are congruent also. Our first question says, what is the length of RS? Well, here is RS, line segment RS. We have two arcs that are the same. The theorem stated that if the arcs are the same, then the chords are the same. So line segment RS is also 34. Your first practice problem is what is the length of line segment HI? Practice two, what is the measure of arc RS? Practice three, what is the measure of angle HFI? Circle W is congruent to circle V. What is the measure of minor arc TU? 
Well, minor arc is going to be the same as minor arc SR. So I look at this major arc, which is 295. A circle completely around is 360, so I just need to find what the difference between 295 and 360 is. So I'm going to take 360 minus 295 and that gives me 65. So the measure of minor arc TU is 65 degrees. Practice 4. Circle A is congruent to circle B. What is the measure of minor arc CD? This question asks, what is the value of C? I have two equal chords. I know they're equal because the arcs each have one tick mark. So I just make these equal to each other. So I have C minus 14 equals 6. I add 14 to both sides, which gives me C equals 20. So the value of C is 20. Your practice 5, what is the value of P? And your final practice problem, the arcs in the diagram are labeled with their measures in degrees. What is the value of C? So where do you feel like you are now on the scale? At a 1, 2, 3, or 4? Put that number at the bottom of your notes or after practice problem number 6 and go do your IXL lesson. Good luck! And that's all for this lesson. Bye!